five to a few minutes ago in Omiyakan and I will show you how cold it is right now because this is insane guys, this is insane. It's been a long time it was not that cold here in Omiyakan. But check, check it out guys, it's almost minus 60 degrees centigrade. Located deep inside Yakutia in Russia, Omiyakon is known as the pole of cold for its extreme sub-zero temperatures. In fact, it holds the record for being the coldest permanent inhabited place on the planet, minus 71 degrees centigrade. This small village with a population of 440 inhabitants is completely isolated from the rest of the world. The only way to access the town is by a two days ride on one of the world's most dangerous roads, the Road of Bones. We have here different kind of frozen fruits. We've got a banana here. The, the sun, man, of the frozen banana. <laughs> this is crazy, this is insane. I could kill someone with that. That can also be a train. <laughs> so yeah, basically here yeah, you don't need a freezer, so the frozen, the frozen fish is just outside as you can see. This is uh, where we're going to stay for the next two nights and um, one day. Almost all houses in the village have small entrances like this one which are not heated. It serves as a fridge as it is around minus 30 degrees. This is where they keep most of the food on the water. Basically, Tamara, our host, is very used to uh, tourists. Here we've got the pictures of all the tourists that came here, like doing some experiments here with the with the cold. Давайте Room tour. Wow. А у вас много туристов, да, которые... Сегодня 17 туда утра. 17 будет. Вот это твоя кровать. Хорошо. The carpet of the world, my friends. The carpet of the world. But why does it get so cold in Omiyakon in comparison to other cities of the region? Yakutia is a remote region far from the moderating influence of the ocean. This continental climate means that the winter gets very cold and the summer very hot. The temperature between summer and winter actually varies by almost 90 degrees Celsius. The reason why Omiyakon is that cold is actually pretty simple. It has two main valleys beside it. These valleys trap wind inside the town and create an even colder climate. The Polis of the North. So Stephen right now is going to uh, do a little tour and explain yeah. us the rules here of the, of so the house. This is the, the, um, this is the kitchen. Uh, so we're going to eat here. This is a table. This is where we're going to have dinner. So she's going to bring dinner now. And then here we have... This is my room. There's another room here. And the toilet. They are outside. The toilets are outside. You want to wash your hands. You just okay. do it like this. Yeah. Um, no shower. No shower. That's the thing. No shower. And try not to days. waste water because okay. it's not unlimited, basically. All right, got it. In the villages, people do not have running water. They need to pick up ice from the river to then store it inside big containers in their house to then use it. Yeah, all right. So on my iPhone, it's uh, minus 48. On your uh, Android, it's minus 52. On outside, it's uh, we've got my one that is saying minus 52 and another one uh, saying... One that says minus 53 and yeah. one that says minus 58. Mm, 58, my, that's crazy <laughs> actually, 58, yeah. wow. Alright, so guys, uh, it's time to first to have a little dinner here. So we've got some uh, pelmini, a tea, some, some jam actually, what the fuck? And a uh, lot of bread <laughs> and candies as you can see, my god, mm -hmm. it's so cute. If you google online how much time you can stay outside in Omiyakon, you will get some crazy articles telling you that you can stay more than one minute outside, naked, yeah. But I thought that it was complete bullshit, and I decided to try it out. So yeah, I'm gonna go outside, naked, by minus 55. Take my life. This morning it's minus 58. One very interesting thing is that the snow, because it is actually warmer than the, the actual air temperature, you don't feel any differences when you pour snow onto your body.
Let's get, let's get inside. <laughs> Man, fuck my life, this was insane. <laughs> okay, I, I feel like uh, there are like stings all over my body right now, small ones everywhere. The snow was not as cold as I thought, uh, just standing outside is, uh, is enough to, to, to feel, I mean you are freezing, that's all. I don't know how much you can, you can go outside like this, um, I had the extremities of my body protected, so gloves. Uh, something for my ears and uh, socks so I would say um, I think at most 10 minutes like really at most you could stay like that outside okay maybe five <laughs> all right guys so I have got an egg here I'm going to break it put it on this plate and see how fast it's going to get frozen I have a timer over there and I actually didn't expect this result when I did this experiment at first, but uh, my phone actually turned off before the egg got frozen. As you can see, it has actually 60% of battery and it just turned off because of how cold it is outside and the egg got frozen in about 10 minutes. I wanted to show very quick uh, the village and other, other houses. So that's how the, the houses of Pomiakan looks like. Here we have an abandoned car, old Soviet abandoned car over there. And there's another one right here, I want to show it to you very quick. Abandoned frozen truck, which uh, looks like from the Soviet time. And here you can see the village of Rimyakon and its uh, 600 inhabitants. And here we have another thermometer that indicates Minus 54 degrees centigrade. Sure, yeah, we can see the dog is like, like surviving outside. But don't feel too much pity for him because uh, here dogs, stray dogs, quite be can be quite aggressive and a uh, lot of bad stories happens here in Yakutia because of stray dogs. Uh, there's an old woman. She she got beaten on um, her face got beaten by some dogs. And basically, we found her two hours later, and she she was like hard as rock. She was complete. Yeah, she was basically dead and frozen. Then it was time for us to head to the stable of Yumakon, where a brave man is working with a few dozen horses. Horse meat is one of the main delicacies of Yakutia, as there is only one shop in Yumakon. People rely mostly on fish, berries, and raw horse meat to survive the long and cold winter. Yakutian horses are kept unstable year-round. They are known for its adaptation to the extreme cold climate of Yakutia, including the ability to locate and graze on vegetation that is under deep snow cover. You can feel how cold it is just by my breath, even if I have a scarf on everything. So we are going to see here, actually, the horses have uh, quite an interesting genetic to uh, withstand the cold. They are like a little bit shorter than usual. Здравствуйте, Орелен. Мишель. Мишель. Это тоже по французски. Вы француз. Я все. Да, английский тоже. А вы один тут работаете? Нет? Вот. Друг ваш там, да? Wow, they got scared of me. So as you can see, they have uh, they're a little bit shorter than uh, horses. А какая самая низкая температура, которую вы uh, чувствовали? 67 градусов. Сейчас для вас холодно или нормально? Больше 50 градусов любому человеку холодно. Да. Сейчас меньше минус 50 и 60. Сегодня утром 56 было. Так что сейчас холодно, можно сказать. Холодно, холодно. Больше 50 градусов любому человеку холодно. Вот. So as you can see, they're a little bit shorter. And it's the sacred animal of Yakutia. Uh, because this is with their food that they are making clothes. Um, basically, they do everything with horses here. А сейчас у вас сколько еще раз? Сейчас 122 года. 120. Ну надо. Через пять лет, через пять лет 200 с лишним будет. А сколько вам лет, если это на секунду? Мне 60 будет меньше. 60. Вы будь здоров. It's definitely cold, even for me who has been living here for a while. Ну хотя. Прошлый раз сейчас хотел спросить. 
это, ну, валенки там, наверное. Валенки. Надо я в Шитие. Шити shoes for minus 50. Check them out, guys. So it's uh, food for horses here. They're eating this uh, kind of grass. Here we have got. Uh, it's a bear that they hunted this uh, uh, this spring. You have got your small one. Huh? Много иностранцев не понимают, как можно жить в таком холоде. Они думают, что ну почему люди отсюда не а, уедут, где тепло, где климат более мягкий. Да, мягкий, да, мягкий, да, да. Первые. А вы приехали сюда? Первые полтора-два года, где-то два года. Ага. У меня было такое состояние вот так. Уеду, не уеду, а. там теплее, вроде жить удобно, там вроде овощи, фрукты есть. А здесь же овощи, фрукты не растут же здесь. Да. Первые два года вы сложнее, типа, вы не знаете, вы говорите, типа... Во-первых, язык, русский язык. А, вы... Я язык не знал. А, -а, -а. а тут гов... не говорили по-русски? Говорили, но очень мало. Очень мало, а -а -а. Когда я приехал, в основном были эти... Работники были пожилого возраста. Ага. Ну, сейчас почти их нету, но и а, Вы кто по национальности? Я бурят. Что? Я бурят по национальности. Не-не, якутский язык, тюркский язык, да. А монго... этот бурятский язык это монгольский. Монгольский, монгольский а. группе относимся. Поэтому я через полтора года научился якутскому полтора языку. 18 да. месяцев я уже якутский ага. язык. Первое плохие языки, э, плохие слова учишь. Да, это правда. Вот такой же с русским языком. After war we went to the local theater of Omiyakon, where a private local show awaited us. There we had the opportunity to delve deeper into the culture of the Yakut people, experiencing their music, trying their food, and even participating in their local games. So we are going to have a traditional concert right now, but we are very late, so we are hurrying a little bit. Wow! So we are going to have a whole concert just for us three. It's the local cinema of Omiakon, my friends. Есть такое прекрасное место на земле под названием Айникон. Вам он известен так. We had the chance to participate in a game where you perform a single leg squat while holding your ears and pick up an object from the floor using only your mouth. There were various difficulty levels and I only managed to pass the first one unfortunately. This game is quite challenging, especially after a two day car ride where I barely had the chance to stretch. After the concert, it was time for us to go back to our house, where it was our last night in Omiyakon. The next day, I decided to have a short interview with Tamara, uh, our host, to ask her about her life here in Omiyakon and why she stayed to stay here her whole life, basically. So, here is the interview. How long have you been here? Yes, but here I was born. Ah, you were born here? 
Бабушка, мама, все мои дети. Всю вот жизнь. Она... А вы никогда не хотели переехать? А, нет. Никогда? Никогда. Ваше сердце здесь, да, в Омьяконе. Ага. Я выпустила, 12, я писала 12 книг. 12 книг? 12 а -а -а. книг. Ага, писала, защитила статус полюс холода и Микон. Пишу сейчас тоже книги, много угу. пишу. А, у меня трое детей, 11 внуков, 13 правнуков. А вы о чем были все эти книги? Про... О Ваймиконе. Да. Все о Вайм... mm. истории Ваймикона. Угу. И нам было со Стивом интересно, как здесь, в этом доме, у вас вода? Это из лёда тоже? Из нет, да? нет, Или... нет. Водовозка. Нет? Водовозка. Водовозка привозит и шлангой там. Ага. In the next videos you will see us attempting to take a nice bath in Omiakon at minus 50 degrees Celsius. Going outside on a frozen river to learn from locals how they fish in such a climate. And how we got stuck for a few days on the road of bones on our way back. So stay tuned because it's going to be epic.